welcome to our fortnightly Compline. Let's take a time to be quiet and to prepare ourselves. Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's come to confession. Remembering that we're told in scripture that if we say we have we no sin, the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sin, God's faithful and just to forgive us. So let's take a moment to think through the day and to ask God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Before the ending of today, Creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Tonight's readings are a psalm, as we always read a psalm together. We're going to read Psalm 48. So if you'd like to turn to Psalm 48 with me. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of the hot of the, all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. And behold, the kings assembled, they came none together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to far flight. Trembling took hold of them there, anguish as of a woman in labour. By the east wind you shattered the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. We have thought on earth steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches, reaches to the ends of the earth. So your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgment. Walk about Zion, go about her. Number her towers, consider her well her ramparts. Go through her citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from Peter. It's from 1 Peter chapter 4. And we start to read towards the end of the chapter. So we start to read at verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings. You may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. 
because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer as a meddler or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for the judgment to begin at the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their soul to a faithful creator while doing good. What a simple message. We're not to be surprised when we suffer in the name of Christ. And in fact, when we suffer in the name of Christ, the glory of God is revealed. I did the funeral of a godly woman today, Kay Machen, and she epitomised the Christian character. She was a forgiving woman, a caring woman, a woman who loved community, loved the disadvantaged in society. And I'm sure some laughed at her. But she was blessed because she was living Christ-like life. The warning is that we mustn't suffer in the way that those who commit crime suffer, suffer for wrongdoing. We're to suffer for doing right. And why? Because our eternal future depends on it. Answer me when I call, O oh God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Be sober and be vigilant, it says in 1 Peter 5. Because your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. Resist him strong in faith. So at the end of the day, as we look to sleep, into your hands, O Lord, we commend our spirits. For you have redeemed us, Lord God of truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word's been fulfilled. Your eyes have seen, my eyes have seen the salvation which you've prepared in the sight of every people. A light revealing to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Father, save us while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Let's pray at the end of the day. Father, at the end of the day, we seek your peace. Lord, we live in a world where we are pressured and troubled in heart, mind and spirit. We see around us an economy in free fall. People worrying about the things of this world. Father, help us to set our gaze upon Jesus. So that the things of this world grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Help us to be Philippians people who come to you in prayer and know that peace which passes all understanding. And we remember before you tonight 
Les and Gwyneth and the wider family as they mourn Les's father's death. Give them peace beyond all understanding. We pray for all who mourn because of Covid's ravages on our society. We pray for those who lead us. Father, it seems that teachers, leaders, politicians, scientists are all turning on one another and not thinking of the common good. Father, have mercy on our nation. So we give our day to you, Lord. We thank you for the day that we've had, the time with family, for the chance to just enjoy creation around us. We know, Lord, that you will give us another day and if you don't, Lord, if you take us home to be with you tonight, that would be a blessing too. So we entrust tomorrow and a sunrise to your grace and mercy. And we ask that we might sleep well tonight. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us tonight, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. Come with the dawning of the day. And so, Father, bless us and watch over us. Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lord, look kindly upon us and give us peace. Good night. Sleep well. I'll see you in the morning when we'll look at the next section of Job together. And I pray that God will bless this evening to you. It's been a joy to spend these evenings just sharing God's word with you in the quiet and of this service. Thank you for coming and sharing with me. God bless.